So, your character is a furry. Not a problem. Real quick, this was a bonus video that I ran through a poll on the support squad. It wasn't something that I was going to cover originally, but the people have spoken, so I will deliver. If you want to make furries, then go for it. As far as facial mocap goes, though, luckily, working on furries is actually not too different from working on a normal face. I'll be using Fox as an example, and unfortunately, I didn't have the time to transfer the rigging from Maya to Blender, so you'll see Maya in the background, but all this info translates to Blender no problem. All right. When you are preparing a furry face, you generally want to take the same approach as if you were working on a very stylized, non-photorealistic face. The reason for this is because most of the time, a photorealistic ball and socket eye approach doesn't really translate to the eyes of a stylized furry face. In Smash, for example, you can kind of see the eyes are just floating along this imaginary flat plane. So take the stylized approach. Eyebrows, on the other hand, are usually a little easier, because the brows are usually just part of the face through a texture mat. So in a way, you almost don't have to worry about them unless you really want them to be separate objects. Now the jaw is by far the biggest abnormality compared to a normal face. You have to remember that pretty much this area that's highlighted in orange should be treated the same as this area on a furry. So when the jaw goes down, everything like the tongue and the bottom line of the teeth should go down with it. From there, all the cheek and lip type shape keys are more or less the same as a normal face. Nothing here should really surprise you, so just approach it with a little common sense. And that's really it. It's not too different from a normal face. But anyway, hope that helps, and as always, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.